Hey everybody, welcome to another Goody Reader comparison video. My name is Michael. This is Peter. Today we're going to check out the Barnes & Noble Nook HD Plus against the Amazon Kindle Fire HD 8.9. This is really a battle of the 8.9 inch readers. They exactly the same height, <laughs> almost the exact same width. Uh, what's really different about them? Well, you have 1920 by 1280 for the resolution on the Nook HD, and you have 1920 by 1200 on the Amazon. They both relatively have the same specs. They have 1.5 gigahertz dual core processors, so they're pretty even with that. They both come in different degrees of storage, depending if you want 16 or 32 gigs. Uh, we'll talk about expandable memory when Peter looks at the hardware here. R battery life, the, the Kindle Fire actually edges it out. You have around 11 hours, but you only have about eight on the Nook HD. And we're gonna take a look at some of the the hardware elements to this. Looking at them head on, this looks very much like a Nook uh, tablet, the previous versions with the chiseled edge and the little hoop there, whereas uh, the Amazon Kindle is flush from bezel to from the, from the bezel to the screen and just all the way around because of the Gorilla Glass surface. You have a webcam uh, and a light sensor on the Amazon Kindle Fire HD. You also get nothing on the right side of the device. On the bottom, you get HDMI out, uh, micro HDMI, LED indicator light, micro USB. You also get uh, status uh, standby mode slash power button, button, volume up and down, very flush, very nice, and 3.5 mil headphone jack. And on the back, you get two stereo speakers. So there's two speakers in this side and two speakers in that side offering unparalleled uh, audio performance. It gives you do Dolby surround sound. Pretty much. You get the end button that brings you back home. You get a very nice uh, glass surface with very high quality plastics around the edge. You have a Nook proprietary jack which is uh, something that Barnes & Noble is, le is kind of going towards instead of the micro USB you'll see here. Looks very much like an Apple proprietary jack but it does not fit in any of the Apple products. You also have expandable memory, something the Kindle Fire does not have. You can expand this up to 32 gigabytes regardless of what version of the Nook HD you buy. Status indicator, power button on the right side, microphone, volume, and headphone jack on the top, nothing on the left, and only one speaker on the back, very iPad 3-esque. So whereas the Kindle has four speakers, you only get one on the Nook. All right, and Barnes & Noble's told us that they're going to be releasing a firmware update soon that will bring this up to the SRS True Media format. So this one speaker should probably pump out double the amount of noise that it does now. And you'll see what we mean when we take a look at the software next. Okay, as you can see here, that this is the main home screen for the Barnes & Noble Nook HD. You can see all these profiles here. These are profiles that we've established. So we're going to log in with our main admin one here. And you could actually customize profiles. So the, both of these devices are built more towards the family, whereas the Nook HD offers a little bit more versatility. Uh, Amazon Kindle actually has uh, an app that will allow you to manage uh, your kids' online behaviors. And now this is free time, and this is a part of the firmware update when you're cranking out of the box uh, in the first time. So we've made an icon, we've named them John. You could manage some of the profiles daily time limits, and manage content. Manage content will basically be s saying, okay, I don't want them to have access to the store, I don't want to have them access to the internet, but I do want to have them access to maybe some games and apps and things like that. Whereas with uh, Barnes & Noble, um, it's sort of like the same thing. You can edit our profile Amy here. And you'll see here, shop, web, and everything else has disappeared on the bottom except for library and apps. And this is to prevent your child from viewing inappropriate sites on the website, buying thousands of dollars worth of uh, HD content, and downloading them to your tablet without your consent. It's kind of just to control their experience a little bit. Right, and I, I think I do like the way that they do it more like this. It doesn't seem like uh, the Kindle Fire HD 8.9 uh, doesn't really have... Um, a device. Really, yeah, it doesn't really have like dedicated profiles that you would log into. Yeah. It just seems like you could say, okay, if you don't know the password, you're not having access to any of the fun stuff. And of course, you can go to 
uh, more and change your parental controls here on or off for uh, password management and other settings. And as you can see here, we've turned it back to our admin and we now have access to web, email, and shop. Okay, so let's take a look at the main UIs because this is what you're going to be seeing on a daily basis. This is what the Kindle has. It's called a carousel. They've had this uh, for years now since the first edition of the Kindle Fire. And uh, Barnes & Noble had, uh, I guess, directly put that into their device here with the carousel up top. And uh, from here, you can both drag things down onto your screen or click on them to activate them. Things you've used or most recently visited, like websites and stuff, will show up here. You can press and hold to remove things from your carousel on both. Um, I would say, although these are both Android, um, I would say that the Barnes & Noble looks more Android-esque with the multiple pages, the press and hold to bring up live wallpapers and all that. You can't really do any of that on the Kindle because it's more of an uh, Amazon experience on here. Yeah, so you're not going to be able to set up your own widgets, your own live wallpapers with the Amazon device, but you will be able to do that with the, the Barnes & Noble Nook HD. So if this is more, uh, if you're more into like widgets and wallpapers and, and customization, this would probably be the tablet for you. But at the, on the same note, the Amazon does allow access to uh, APKs downloaded from unknown sources, whereas the Barnes & Noble does not. So it's kind of like a toss-up. Well, and, and in effect, if, if people don't understand what Pete meant by that, was that um, by default, both of these tablets have their own app stores. And we'll look at the shop experience now. And this would allow you to... Uh, you know, buy paid apps, but also download free apps. Uh, with the Nook HD, you only have what's available in their app store. You, you don't have, you can't load in your own apps. Whereas with the Kindle app store, it's a little bit more vibrant, and I think it does offer more apps on general, but the device itself allows you to load in your own apps, and uh, in a video on our YouTube channel, we've documented exactly how to do that. So if you want to learn how to do that step by step, we show you. Exactly. So not only do you have all the access to all of the content you see here at the click of a button, you'll see here, we'll just go ahead and press free, get app and away it goes. You do have access to um, pretty much any APK you might have on your computer, um, one you want to transfer in, maybe a website you have access to. You can do that on the Kindle, so it's a lot more um, it's a lot more customizable on the Kindle than the Barnes & Noble. Okay, so here's basically the Barnes & Noble App Store. It's pretty consistent uh, depending on what you're accessing. So you saw the app menu, we're looking at it in, in terms of like staff picks. It's, it's fairly the same. Um, we could go back to the main thing and say like look at books. And uh, you can obviously see the theme of the store on the left for the Kindle is black and white for the Nook. <laughs> yeah. So it's a contrast of colors to be sure. I mean, on an aesthetic level, I think I, I do like the way the Nook store is presented. I, I'm a huge fan of that clean white format. We'll just click on a book here to show you guys uh, what is to be seen when you go and, you know, looking for what the book's about. You can look at reviews. Same with the Kindle. You have the review section down below there. You can recommend. You can add to wish list on here. You can borrow for free. You can also try a sample, and it's as easy as clicking it, and without you even doing anything, it's already downloading the sample to your, um, to your library. Yeah, so when you look at this, it's pretty well Amazon might have a little bit more reviews because I think they just have more users right. in general that are c contributing to the community. But on like a superficial level, I mean, you see like rating systems, samples, you can buy. I mean, it, it's pretty well the main core features are mirrored. So right. you're not really seeing, oh, the Kindle Fire blows the nook out of the water. It's like, well, they offer the same sort of features. Exactly. They're just presented differently. And you can see we downloaded a sample on there just as easy as we did on the Kindle. Yeah, just one click. And, and you're good to go. So you saw the various things that we've looked at here, and they've all looked the same, but with the Nook, I mean, with the Amazon Kindle Fire HD 8.9, your books menu looks different from, say, like the video store. Right. You can see here we were on the books, and earlier we were on the video um, section, and we'll show you that. It's going to look very different than um, what the book store looked like. You can see 
right here, drastically different than the bookstore. Everything scrolls left and right. And another example, we'll go to the music store. And once again, very different than the bookstore and the video store. Yeah, so you're in the video store here, and it's pretty well the same sort of and general outlay. Exactly. And uh, just to point out that with uh, the Nook HD Plus and Nook HD, which are the latest generation tablets by Barnes & Noble, they actually introduced their own uh, television and movies. So they've actually made uh, agreements with some of the top uh, media companies out there to be able to let you uh, both rent and buy movies in standard definition and high definition. So there is a lot more to the Barnes Noble store experience now than just like ebooks, apps, kids' books, and things like that. Exactly. Okay, so let's look at the reading experience because when you buy devices like this, especially by companies like Barnes Noble and Amazon, which are really known for having a wide you know, Barnes Noble Nation's largest bookstore, right. Amazon, primarily known as like an ebook reading company. So we're going to compare the, the, the ebook experience. You can see on the Barnes and Noble, I've clicked on something that was stored in my account, but wasn't necessarily on my tablet. But within, uh, before I could finish that sentence, it's actually already downloaded there. So we'll navigate over to the, the front pages here and the introduction. So, you can see here we've already made a highlight, but we'll go to a clean page to give you guys an example. Uh, both of these, this is the stock way it looks. If you click on the middle of both, you have text changes. These are going to be kind of your go-to menu. On the Barnes & Noble, you have live text altering. However, it does do a full refresh every time you do uh, change it, whereas on the Amazon, it changes live. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I do like something on the Kindle. It has white, sepia, and black. However, on the Nook, you have the same settings, but doubled. You actually have white, you have black, gray. I like gray a lot, actually. Yeah. Cream, brown, and last one, off-white. And this is something not a lot of other tablets do. Six different themes. Yeah, you're not, with that off-white, it's not like the standard LED super you know white background super black text yeah. kills your eyes in the oh, dark yeah, at definitely. least with an off white it's a little bit easier in the eyes you have text styles and you also have publisher defaults on the nook and you have text to speech on the kindle they both press and you can do long press to get into your kind of secondary menu from there you can make highlights notes Let's compare so let's the, look keyboard. the keyboards. Yeah. Uh, I would say the Barnes & Noble, um, although the buttons are nice and big, it really looks two-dimensionally flat, whereas the Kindle has a lot of shading and kind of highlights on each of the individual keys, so it does offer more of a three-dimensional look to it. And predictive text, too. Yeah, absolutely. You have all these uh, suggestions, whereas well, on the... Yeah, Nook, you're not getting predictive text, which is like good if you're someone like me that much prefers the tectonic feel of uh, a BlackBerry keyboard than a touchscreen keyboard. Exactly. You also have highlights. You can change the color of highlights on the Nook. So if different highlights mean different things. You can also do share quote, which will share to um, Twitter, Facebook, and all that. You can search the web on the Kindle, search in Wikipedia, and you get all those Wikipedia and Google options on the Nook as well. One thing that uh, the Kindle does really well, and let's open up that Saving Rachel book. So if we go to a book we've purchased from the Amazon marketplace, we'll go to uh, Saving Rachel. Now, this is a book where we've purchased both the ebook and the audiobook, and it's interesting to point out that Barnes Noble doesn't really sell audiobooks. Right. See, this is the book here. And then if we go to our audiobook section, we have the same book there, John Locke's Saving Rachel. So we'll show you the, the book experience here. Say you're on chapter 35 and you want to do a read-along. Press the play button. My idea was to take the remaining $50 million I had and put it into a corporation. This is a sum of money the government would feel good about confiscating someday. So I figured I may as well make it easy for them to find. 
you can actually read along or have it read to you, and you can uh, change speeds. If you want to read a little slower. Another feature is uh, because Amazon actually owns Audible, which is the audiobooks company, it's actually the biggest one out there, that if uh, you're reading this ebook and you end off here, and then you fire up your iPhone or you fire up your Android app with the Audible app, this will actually sync to like the last page that you've read. So it's uh, very easy if you're reading late at night and then you're commuting the next morning, you can sort of just pick up on that book. And then when you get home, the book is automatically synced to where you left off on exactly, the auto version. Exactly. So, and uh, X-Ray too. So we can go to X-Ray and we can search the entire book. So this is to, th uh, this service kind of gives you a little bit of indication of what all these people are, where they're referenced in the book. It really helps when you're juggling two or three books and say you forget who's who. Um, obviously, Rachel is the main character. She's mentioned several times throughout the book, whereas, say, uh, Chuck or Aiden Fry have only been mentioned a couple times, and you can always click on that and get directed to the portion of the book they're referenced. And... Uh, also, terms and people are mentioned as well. So if you don't know what uh, Kentucky is for some reason or what they meant when they said certain things, you can check there. Yeah, so I mean, on the core reading experience, like changing fonts, line spacing, backgrounds, both of these do that. Yeah. But you can see that Amazon really sort of does really different things. X-ray, uh, being able to read along with the audiobook, you know, whisper sync for voice, whisper sync for text. I mean, just like things that no one else is doing. So if those facets matter to you, it could be the deciding factor whether you purchase Nook HD Plus or Kindle Fire HD 8.9. Let's look at something else now. We're going to look at, I think, the magazine. Look at a magazine here. So we have Rolling Stones on both. So we click on that. And you see this is an additional um, issue we had here. So well, for the sake of the review here, we'll just boot up the same one. And if you tap the bottom, you can actually quick scroll all the way to this, the front, much like you can with the Kindle. We were in article view, we will explain that in a quick second. But let's just do a quick side by side showing you guys exactly what these guys bring to the table. Yeah, I mean resolution fairly comparable. It's off by a couple pixels. Yeah, it's off yeah, it's off by a couple pixels. The exact same screen size is 8.9 on each device. So Let's just zoom in maybe like on his face a little bit so you can see the shadows, skin tones, and things like that. Obviously, how it looks on camera is fairly close to how it's looking at to the naked eye. Right. So we'll let you guys decide there for one or two seconds. Yeah. Okay. So now that we have the Rolling Stone open, you can see both of them sort of do the exact same thing in terms of like animated page turns. Now, both of these magazines are purchased from Barnes & Noble and Amazon. So you can see, this is fairly comparable. Yeah, yeah. Something that uh, we know that the Amazon kind of completely dominated the ebook reading experience, but something that Barnes and Noble can do that the Amazon can't do is scrapbooking. So say you wanted to rip this out of an actual magazine. Well, all you do is click the little icon at the bottom. You can see the rip lines. Add it to your scrapbook. And then from there, you can open up your scrapbook and you can see that this isn't the magazine. This is actually pages we've ripped out yeah, from different magazines. Yeah, this is the magazines. page that we just ripped out now. And then here's like other pages that we've done in other comparisons and reviews. So you could almost seem like it's a, a virtual magazine in itself. So you could share with your friends and everything like that. There isn't a scrapbooking option on the Amazon Kindle, unfortunately. Um, you can double tap on an article to go into um, article view, so to speak, and uh, article view is outlined very clearly on the Barnes and Noble. So they it's a little bit more intuitive on the Barnes and Noble, like how you go from a, uh, a rich style sheet with you know many articles on a page, colored backgrounds and everything, and then condensing it all to just text and a picture, which is the same as the Amazon does it. Right. If you try to long press on the Barnes & Noble, you don't have a lot of the uh, text augmentation options. And um, 
you you have the you have the text option. Sorry, you don't have most of the uh, Wikipedia share uh, search full definition as you do on the Kindle. So that's a little bit of advantage into the Kindle's um, side. Now, do you have the full options that if you press in the middle, you do have the same amount of text options. So you can you change the background image? Oh, I guess you can. Yeah, same with the themes on the. Um, Barnes and Noble. So when it comes down to it, Barnes and Noble Nook HD Plus has more themes, but and, and when you change options, it's a full page refresh. With the Kindle uh, Fire 8.9, you have the comparatively the same options. You don't have as many of the themes, but it's much easier, you know, instantly to update text because it's not doing like a full page refresh. Right. So whether you're looking at magazines and article view or as they're intended you have a lot of options here the next thing that we want to look at is comic books so we have all of our graphic novels on the home carousel so we're gonna boot up uh, Venom and on uh, the Amazon we'll go to apps we'll go to uh, Marvel and we will try to get the same comic right here, Venom Volume 2. So we'll get to the cover page. Something you can't do in a real comic book, browse pages. And we'll put this in a side-by-side -side so you guys can check that out for a sec. Pretty similar in yeah. both colors and resolution-wise. Yeah, you're going to see very similar qualities on these two devices. I mean, they're both capacitive touch. They're both glass screens, both 8.9. So they're going to be pretty comparable. So you see with comic books on the Nook, you're getting animated page turns, which is cool. This is because this was purchased from Barnes & Noble, whereas we're utilizing a, um, a Marvel app on the Amazon Kindle. You also get panel view here. And you yeah. can see it'll bring up where we purchased it from. That allows you to, you know, leave a review if you like it. Or see what other people, th you know, if you thought this sucks, you could be like, I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is the comic book experience. Fairly comparable. Absolutely. I mean, pinch and zoom on both. Uh, the, the Marvel app offers advantages such as singling out particular panels. Um, pretty much they're... They're pretty identical, however. Now, speaking of Marvel app, Barnes & Noble does not have Marvel app, DC, or any of the other uh, things like Comixology or Dark Horse in its app store, whereas Amazon does have a lot of these companies on its app store, but you could also sideload them too. Exactly. Last thing we want to look at in terms of reading is newspapers. So we should have a newspaper right there, the Wall Street Journal. And uh, we also have... Um, well, the thing about uh, both of these is that they're not traditional newspaper layouts, much like you'd find with Press Reader. They are the same content delivered very differently. You'll see here that there's no ads, no crossword puzzles, no, um, no Sudokus or anything. They're the individual articles delivered in uh, kind of ebook form. So you get the kind of header picture, and then you just get the scrolling article. Kind of the same on both. And once again, very dark gray, black themed, very uh, light grays and white themed. Yeah, this isn't your mother's newspaper, that's for sure. So you can either read them as they're attended or go to article view, but with the Kindle Fire uh, HD 8.9, from app to app, newspapers look totally different. So the USA Today would look different from, say, the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, and uh, other magazines like that. So we'll just fire this up quickly just to show you. So it looks totally different. Yeah. Because you can't get individual issues, they are, in essence, their own apps. Yeah, whereas with Barnes & Noble, most of the newspapers we looked at had this type of format to it. So they do build a little bit of consistency. Uh, one of the last things that we want to show you is uh, video because we have a single speaker here whereas we have four speakers on this device here. So we really want to check out how these display full motion video as well as sound.
So you saw from there that obviously the Kindle Fire HD 0.9 was significantly louder, but then again, it has four speakers yeah. and, and Dolby surround sound like technology, whereas this has a single speaker. Right. Um, in terms of video quality, they're virtually identical. Um, the, the vibrancy is exactly the same, float exactly the same, uh, the amount of pixels. Width-wise, I think the pixels are about the same, so you're not going to see any significant differences in between the two. You're not going to say, wow, this one's so much better than this one. Sound-wise, the Amazon Kindle kind of dominated. Otherwise, um, uh, it was pretty much just equal. And uh, one last thing we forgot to mention that we will go into is viewing a very high uh, MB-sized PDF. This is about 130, 140 MB file of a Dungeons and Dragons monster manual. So yeah, this is PDF, mainly we're showing this to you because PDFs really excel on larger screen devices. And this is actually the first time Amazon has ever released a, a, a tablet that's 8.9 inches. And same with Barnes & Noble. They've only released 7-inch tablets yep. from the Nook Color to the Nook Tablet to the Nook HD. And now they finally got out of their 7-inch mold, and much like Amazon, you know? Exactly. So this is fairly exciting because, you know, one of the benefits of large screen displays is being able to read textbooks for, if you're a student, be able to load in your own uh, PDFs and things like that. So I think the Amazon Kindle is displaying this a little bit better, but um, they both are very large screened and they both... Yeah, um, it's almost like this is a bit darker. Yeah, the contrast seems to be a little bit different in this particular PDF, but uh, I mean, they both do the, the same... They both do their job. Seems like the Kindle's probably a little bit more responsive. Yeah, it's uh, the Barnes & Noble seems to be struggling a little bit with this. Uh, they're both running the same processing speed, dual cores. They're both running one gigabyte of RAM. Uh, it almost looks like the Barnes & Noble is displaying more of the page, too, from top to bottom. So yeah, the really. Kindle's a little bit condensed. Well, in essence... It seems like when you're pinching and zooming, it's fairly quick. Although with with pages that have a lot of high resolution graphics, right. they, they stutter a it little bit. It did seem that way. Yeah. Whereas the Amazon seems to just kind of pinch and zoom with no issue. Um, either way, this is the this is the uh, experience here. There's not too many ways to reflow or. Uh, look up in book and define and change text and all that. But at the same time, to be fair, you do have full pinching and zooming capabilities yeah. there that we had a little bit of a hiccup with Amazon as well. So they both kind of have their drawbacks uh, when they're um, trying to So display. can you pull this up that I'm seeing here? I we get a, uh, a progress bar. It's not a page. Uh, oh, row. I like this then because yeah, you, you can actually see like what each page? page shows up. So it's like, oh yeah, I remember that page. It had a winged red of a thing. Right, so I would say the um, Amazon probably is a little more fluid in the way it displays the pages, but uh, the Barnes & Noble does have advantages such as uh, the page roll, so it kind of gives you thumbnails as to what page you're going to be looking at, so that's a little bit of an advantage there. Yeah, totally. Okay, guys, so we've really showed you everything and uh, everything when it comes to this device from uh, PDFs, ebooks, magazines, newspapers, comics, uh, content distribution systems, and a whole lot more. If we forgot to mention anything, uh, leave a comment on this video and let us know, and in a future video, we'll, we'll go over it. And let us know your thoughts. Make sure to visit goodyreader.com for all the latest news, previews, and industry-wide coverage. And for a comparison video of the Barnes & Noble Nook HD Plus and the Amazon Kindle Fire HD 8.9, my name is Michael. My name is Peter. Everybody take care.